everybody, it's Friday on Foster Life. Holy crap, I am still full from Thanksgiving turkey dinner yesterday. Now I'm vegan, so I didn't eat the turkey and the ham, but oh man, all those fixings, I did indulge myself and I'm still stuffed. Ha, 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 ha. Now Ethan is out getting Christmas and Black Friday and all that stuff. And I'm in the studio talking to you. We're talking about foster care in the news. It isn't the fake news, it's the real stuff. And we're gonna break it down for you and see what's going on with foster care in the news right here on Foster Life Today. Now, we went and saw Mark Wahlberg's new movie, Instant Family, and it is amazing. It's basically what we've gone through in the last five years, from the embarrassing moments, to the kids being little tyrants, to the tantrums, to falling in love, to what it's like after a visit and they come back and they start having behaviors and it takes a while to get them back into the groove. We have experienced all of that. I'm telling you, if you're thinking about being a foster parent, this is a good way to go and to get kind of a clear picture of what it's like to be a foster home. And it's a lot of fun, and you're gonna see that in this movie, but you're also gonna see it's a lot of hard work as well. But in the end result, the end result, the end result is usually always the same. And it's about making a difference. Instant family, it's in theaters now, great family movie. Take all your little hooligans with you and you'll enjoy it, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll have a great experience. If you're a foster home or an adoptive home or a kinship home, you will relate with 90% of the movie. It is right on spot. Instant family in theaters now. Today, we are talking about foster care in the news, breaking it down and looking at what's going on in the media with foster care. When we come back, we're gonna talk about Kansas right after these messages. Welcome back everybody to Foster Live. Today we are talking about foster care in the news media and it brings me to a story that just uh, broke this week or actually they've been working on it in Kansas but it's about the abuse and the ne neglect that has been going on in the foster care um, program in Kansas and it has been kind of a mess but the 18 kids that were missing from foster homes within the three counties after a hundred officials, federal officials, got involved to investigate and to locate the 18 runaways. They have all been recovered, which is really, really good news. Now, the next thing is, is how are they gonna fix the problem that they have? They have had an ongoing problem with abuse and neglect in the foster care program. And I know that it's all about, you know, putting those steps in place, putting um, the structure in place. And each state, and, and Courtney has talked about this on the show from time to time, each state kind of gets to do with in their own state, their own thing. 
but it's under the umbrella of the federal government. And so with the feds now involved and the Kansas Bureau of Investigations involved with the um, neglect and abuse in the foster care program, now they need to investigate, see exactly what's been going on, and then put uh, procedures and policies in place to ensure that that doesn't continue within these homes. And, you know, really thinking about it, um, how should those foster homes um, that where this abuse and neglect was taking place, I think that not only they should be responsible, but I would think that the, the state should be responsible as well. Our caseworker comes once a month to our house. They spend anywhere from um, 35 minutes to an hour in our home. But I have several kids in care, so I have several workers in my home. I have several therapists in my home. I have sp several speech therapists in my home, physical therapists, occupational therapists, nurses. We have a whole group of people that come in on an ongoing pay basis. And I think it would be interesting to see in this investigation with the Kansas Bureau of Investigations, did any of those people see signs of abuse and neglect in the foster care system. Folks, we gotta fix it. We got to fix it from the governor on down in every state. Our state is no different. We have a very imperfect system. And if we're going to recruit foster families good foster families in the system, we have to fix the broken system. And what types of things are we going to put in place to make sure that kids that have been abused and neglected are not coming into a system and being abused and neglected? It makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. We're going to be following this investigation in Kansas as they're looking into the allegations of abuse and neglect in the foster care system. And folks, we know foster families in Kansas and Foster Life, Foster TV is here to advocate for the good families the best that we can in your area. We want to be there for you. And we want to help you fix a broke system. It's really important. It's important for these kids that are coming in to care. When we come back, we're talking about foster care in the news only on Foster Life. Hi folks, it's Mama T here with Mama T's Cooking Big. Join us for the Foster Christmas Challenge. Foster Live, today it's Friday. After Thanksgiving, it's Black Friday here at Foster Life and all across the country as people take to the streets to get ready for Christmas and to buy Christmas and Hanukkah gifts for all the little munchkins around the world. They're playing Santa and we're in the studio breaking down foster care in the media. We just got done talking about Kansas and the ongoing investigation into the neglect and abuse in the foster care system. Oh, we have a much better story coming up right now. Jamia Emil was in foster care and her home ec teacher Many years ago, I think she's 27 now, her home ec teacher in high school took her to a um, store and they went on the reduced rack and she got her a prom dress and um, it just really changed this foster child's life, this Jamil uh, Emil. And um, so recently she decided that she was gonna do the same thing and, and this is what she said and I quote, 
I got to, uh, it got me thinking about how many foster youth don't get a go to prom, and I was thinking about how amazing prom was for me and how I wish foster youth got to experience that feeling if they wanted to. And she was starting to think about how she was able to go to prom with dignity and the memories that she had and that she really wished that all kids got to experience that. And she knew that not all kids um, that are in foster care, maybe not all foster families can afford that. Maybe they don't all have programs that can help with those types of expenses. So she decided, being a former foster kid, that she was going to make a difference. She's going to change some lives. And she started calling bridal shops. And she calls these bridal shops and she works out deals with them and is able for lots of girls to participate in prom in her area. Um, and they are able to go to prom with dignity. And I believe she even goes as far as contacting flower shops for corsages and that type of thing. And it's a community. So she's pulled the community together um, in order to experience the prom um, experience. And she's actually hooked them up with dresses and all of the things that they need to do. I've said this so many times. It takes a village to raise kids in care. So many of them have a dark past anyway. And you know, my goal in fostering is to always provide a brighter future. But sometimes that brighter future is because other people besides me want to be involved in my child's life. People from church, people from the community, people from school, co-workers, friends, family. They want to be involved and it's because of them that my kids get to experience different things. And sometimes it's not a big thing. At the church we, we came from before we moved uh, to our new home in Springfield, they offered cookies to for a sack lunch program for kids less fortunate where they send meals home on the weekend. And also those cookies are used for Sunday morning services as well. So these elderly women, say it in their 60s, 70s, would meet together on Friday with my teenage boys, junior high and senior high, and they would all make cookies together. Cookies for the sack lunch program, so giving back to the community, and for church on Sunday. And my boys did this for years. But they'll never forget the experience that they had with those ladies and it was their opportunity to give back to the community to make a difference but the difference that those ladies made in my kids lives they'll never forget so my hats off to Jamil Amel for stepping up and making a difference in a young woman's life so that they could go to prom. And not only did you make a difference in that girl's life, but look at the example that you set for that foster family and for all the people around her. It takes a community to serve these young youth. It takes a lot of people coming together 
and being mentors, being positive, showing them that there's a different kind of life, showing them that there are good people in this world, showing them that there's people that truly care. Thank you if you're one of those people. When we come back, we're talking about foster care in the news. Today, Black Friday on Foster Life. Join our Foster Christmas Challenge. It's easy. Share this video to your Facebook page and go shopping for kids 0 to 19 years old. Then take a picture or a short video and post it on the Foster TV fan page. And then drop it off at a local social services or a DFS office. I'm just here because I'm cute. That's it. But don't forget to challenge your friends. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We're single. Not me. Not me either. Welcome back to Foster Life. It's Black Friday. Everybody's out there shopping. Oh, I bet those malls and everything are so busy. And we're here in the studio and we're talking about foster care in the media and different stories that are happening out there. I thought it would just be interesting. We went and saw that instant family the other day and I talked about that at the top of the hour. And I can't help but think people are gonna see that movie and they're gonna say, honey, I wanna foster. Um, it's just a really good way to see what it's like to be a foster family and some of the things that you go through. Oh, so Ohio. Ohio just released a report today that 43% of the kids that have been in foster care have a high school diploma or the equivalent of at 21 years or older. That doesn't seem real good to me. Less than half of the kids that are in foster care in Ohio that are in their 20s have a high school diploma or the equivalent of. I think it's important, one, to remember that it's our right to receive a free education in the United States. So if you are a youth in foster care, not in care, adoptive, whatever, you have the right to a free education. And so for what that means for our foster families and adoptive families and kinship families and the families out there is, is even if your little bundle of joy has been suspended, expelled, whatever from school or struggled with school, they still have the right to a free education. And you need to go to your school locally and see what you can do in order for them to get that free education. It's real simple. A lot of times when we take kids in and they say, oh, they've been expelled and they're 17 years old, we just, oh, okay, go get a job. Well, are we really necessarily doing the best by them? When we know that we live in a country where education is everything, you almost can't get a job at McDonald's anymore without having education. So we need to go back to our schools and say, I understand that Brian can't go to school because he was expelled 
because he threatened to bomb the place. But how am I going to get him his free education? And there's a thing called an IEP. And they can get him an IEP. And then there's lots of different things that you can do. You could go to an alternative school. You could do school online. You could do a homebound program. You could do an after school program. There's many ways to get that free education. And it doesn't mean going to school Monday through Friday. So my question is to Ohio and to the other states is what are we going to do with the foster care system? How are we going to change the foster care system? How are we going to advocate for the foster care system so that we have more than 43% of our foster youth in care having their high school diploma or the equivalent of, which would be a GED. What are we going to do to change that? How are we going to get involved to change that? And if you have a kid in care, a kinship placement, an adoptive placement, and they're struggling in school, it is your right to advocate for that child and get with the school system and figure out how we get them educated. I'm going to give you some breaking news right here. I mean, this is cutting edge. Rob Frank did not learn well in a classroom setting. I didn't. I wasn't a troublemaker. I wasn't a hellion. But I'm not a test taker. And all the other kids were a distraction to me. I would rather spend time with my friends than to learn what was going on in school. But my parents were smart. And they went and figured out what it was that we needed to do to make sure that Rob Frank had an education. And if it wasn't for my parents doing that, would I have been able to do the things that I was able to do? And I owned five very successful companies. It's our job to advocate for those kids in our home and make sure that your school district doesn't push them aside and make them a statistic and 43% Ohio is unacceptable. It's not okay. Let's fix it. Coming up after this, we're talking about stories in the media and foster care right here on... back to foster life on this black friday we're in the studio i am not getting in any of those lines out there and doing any of that craziness i'd rather spend my afternoon with you here in the foster tv studios and we're talking about foster care in the media today 
and we've had some really good stories, some encouraging stories, and I'm hoping that some information that I give you today will help you, and also um, kind of put your mind in a place that we need to stay involved, and we got to keep advocating for these kids in care, because if we don't do it, who's going to do it? It's so important. Last year, in the foster care system, we increased our number of kids coming into care by 7% in the United States. And I know in our state, we had an increase as well. And the more kids that we take into care, the more foster families we need, the more the demand for residential facilities, mental facilities, and whatnot. And one of the things that I continually see in the media about fostering is the need for medical or mental facilities. There's not enough facilities in our state to take care of the kids that come into care that are dealing with mental illness such as bipolar, anxiety, depression, suicidal, and so we need to increase those facilities as well. And it's, it's huge news, coast to coast, state to state. Do we have enough facilities for these young people? But also, in the same respect, if you're watching this and you're thinking about fostering, we're in need of good foster homes. So many times we hear the stories of the foster families who neglect and abuse foster children. And those are the only stories we hear. But there are so many good foster homes out there that are serving and making a difference in a child's life. And maybe that's you. Maybe, maybe you've always thought you could take a child in and make a difference. Maybe you felt called to that Maybe you felt that that's kind of in your spirit to do that. And we need foster families like you. Because as I'm looking as to what's in the news for foster care, what we're talking about today, what's in the news? We have all these kids coming into care and we don't have enough homes, families, facilities to take care of what's coming into care. And then once they come into care, are we really doing the best job for reunification? Because folks, the number one thing that we're supposed to be doing is reunification of the child and the family, if at all possible. Now, obviously. If the child and the family aren't compatible, mom's not working services, dad's not working services, nobody's trying to improve the relationship, then obviously reunification is probably not the best thing. But are we doing everything within our state for reunification? It's a good question. And secondly, the most important, we always do what's in the best interest of the child. And when I read these stories, I'm not sure that we're always doing what's in the best interest of the child in care. 43% of 20 year olds in Ohio have their high school diploma or GED. 43%. Are we really doing what's in the best interest of the child? And how are we going to come together as a community to change that? When we come back on Foster Life, we're going to wrap it up. We know that you have a choice in what you do each day, and we're glad that you joined us today right here on Foster Life. We'll be back right after. Listen up, it's Mama T here. 
Foster, guess what? Look for Mama T's Cooking Big only on Foster TV coming to you in January 9th of 2019. Ciao, baby. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to Foster Life today after Thanksgiving. We're headed to Christmas now. Only so many shopping days for our little bundles of joy and Christmas holidays and traditions. All of that has started. It's gonna get busy, busy, but each afternoon you can join us on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays right here on Foster Life. And we promise to have good information for you. And we know that you have a choice and what you do on those afternoons, but we ask that you would spend them with us and hopefully we will give you some new ideas, a little bit of education, and a lot of fun, and you can laugh at me because I don't see you, and it's, it's way good, and so we have a good time. Coming up Monday, we got a great show with Courtney. We're going to be talking babies, all things babies coming up on that show, and I think you'll want to see it because if you're taking a baby in care, there's a lot of things that you might want to know, especially if you're a new foster parent. And we want to help you out and give you that information as well. We're behind the Foster Christmas Challenge this Christmas season. 439,000 kids are in care in the United States. And we want to make sure for all of the kids that believe in Christmas or Hanukkah that we are able to get them the Christmas that they deserve. If you want to know more about the Foster Christmas Challenge, visit our Foster TV Facebook page. You can see a video there. Make sure to share that video and challenge your friends to get involved as well. We want to make this holiday season extra special for any child in care this Christmas. Till Monday, when we're talking babies with Courtney Lavelle. We'll see you later right here on Foster Life.